We'll do something. <laughs> oh god, yeah, we'll do something. And to warn my fe fellow players, I have not played a melee played a melee class in over five years. So if I suck, I suck. Fair enough. This is the world in which you start the game. Uh, you are in the bottom left-hand corner, in a mountainside uh, city called Drea Dranor. Mostly populated by elves. Uh, it is a fairly technologically advanced world. You have been asked as a group to report to the Verdon Tavern, which is almost at the very top of the mountain, and it takes the three of you quite a while to climb up there. And as you climb up, the light gets lower and lower, and the cold begins to bite. It is a late autumn evening when you finally arrive. The three of you have been travelling together for a little while, been making your uh, names out there as dependable mercenaries, but as you Finally, trudge up the steps to the Verdan Tavern. Please, describe your characters to me. Well, I guess I'll go first. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Please, so, I want to know who this person is. My full name, Lycoris Radiata. Um, though most just call her Lyra, since it's easier. Um, is... Not really notorious, but within the circle she's been in, she's known for being an absolute, unapologetic menace of a creature. And what makes it even worse is that it never seems to be intentional, as she just genuinely seems to be that stupid. Um, from what people know, she was raised by nobles and then kidnapped for ransom. At which point she found that she liked the pirates more than her parents, and so as a result, she joined up with the pirates after threatening the life of a jailer, to which who which she almost killed. Um, and then shit happened, and now she is part of the current crew after being forcibly removed from a former one, after being thrown overboard to a to the other ship that her old crew was trying to board. Um, and general appearance-wise, she's um. Short, about three and a half foot, um, very beautiful butterfly esque wings, um, and has a face of unapologetically pure innocence that you would be just doesn't seem right for her as a profession. And then, for whatever reason, seemingly unexplicable, she has a pair of small white horns that seem to kind of poke out of her head that almost look like rose thorns in a way. And um she's just kind of standing out looking at her head, wondering what the hell is going to happen next. So she is enticed to this uh particular mission with the promise of getting back onto a ship. Since the particular company that you were contacted through is one that normally deals with nautical endeavours. Hmm. Sarah? Um, so I'm playing Luca Damiano. Uh, she's obviously a lot taller than uh, Lyra. She's like 5'9", five, 5'10", five, kind of sort of boxer's build, darker skin, like really, really bright red hair with like a ribbon in it. Um, Kind of a devil may care attitude, kind of a partier. Um, Luca would basically summarize her past as saying, I've been to the Feywild and probably nobody believes her. Uh, but when she was a child, she actually literally wandered into the Feywild and was raised by beings from the Feywild. Um, then she fell back into the material plane and was raised in an orphanage. Um, because her mortal family was never to be found, uh, really wants to return to the Feywild one day, but it's kind of one of those people that it's, oh, I, I gotta do this thing first, I gotta do this thing first, uh, so much in the material plane to, like, do and see, 
And I think being a mercenary kind of fits in well with her skills uh, and kind of gives her the money to do the things that she wants to do. Understandable. Josh, who is this delightful creature? Okay, so as we type it out, what in the cinnamon toast fuck is that <laughs> eldritch monster name? I love it. It's, um, I slammed a keyboard and it came out. Oh my god, yes! That's, <laughs> that's how I do half of everything I write. I mean, that was a bit of exaggeration, but yeah, I just kind of thought of random words and strung them together in a way. Okay. How the fuck do you describe this thing? <laughs> Samantha is hot. Literally. Uh, her body temperature is exceedingly hot at any given moment. Uh, there is a reason for that. They're, they're incomparable height to Luca. Half, half plate, kind of desert, camouflaged sort of clothing. Incendiary orange eyes and hair and tattoos going up. Any part of available skin, like depicting the sun and things like that. Um... The party wouldn't know this, but Samantha is unholy levels of old. Um, so much so that this current iteration, she's just shy of 2,000 years old. Uh, a total age of a number. A very big number. Yes. I'm not going to go any more than that. Uh, Does she look that old? Oh god, no! She looks like the portrait. <laughs> I, uh, to kind of, she's a she's a zombie, but <laughs> instead of feeding on brains or anything like that, uh, it's solar radiation that constantly brings her back. So she is at unholy levels of old and looks perfectly fine. Doesn't so she's mean. like Superman, where the sun makes her super. Yeah, it's kind of like a reverse vampire, if you think about it. Brilliant in the sun, hate the darkness. She's probably feeling kind of weak as you guys are finally getting up to the top of this like mountain overlook, then. Oh god, yeah. Uh, you've probably never seen her bleed, either. <laughs> but, I mean, that's part of the course. You have been uh, told to meet uh, your contact here, whose name is Gwendolyn Harvati. Uh, just so you know, we can't move tokens. <laughs> At least I can't. Oopsie. Ah, uh, they didn't get tied to characters properly. Yeah. There we go. Which is weird, because I've just drag and dropped. Except for Luca, who didn't have a circular doodad. The, uh, as you approach the doors, you can feel the warmth radiating from the inside. It is really quite enchanting. There's a, a light loot being plucked. Uh, within with some reedy wannabe bard singing accompanying it. There is a sign above the door, Verdan Tavern, along with a sigil which is uh, that of a kind of woodish looking carved mask. Um. Like an overexcited child, Lyra will just kind of push her way in, arms spread wide as she just takes in everything, and then realizes everyone else is behind and just waits. <laughs> Where is the nearest light source? I must be a moth. <laughs> as you walk in, a figure stands up from this uh, like podium thing uh, next to these pillars. <clears throat> Good evening. Do thou have a reservation? Do, do they? Nah, mate. Okay. You don't. 
Who are you here to see? Anyone in particular? Harvati? Mm -hmm. Send me a little list. Oh, you are of the Harvati party. <laughs> she goes, yeah, obviously. Just this way. Let me take you to her. He leads the way uh, down these stairs, and the room beyond this like dining area is like bathed in light. There's uh, all these are uh, pillars, and there is there are torches attached to all of them, as well as various other candles on all the different tables. Must dress, Gwendolyn. Your guests have arrived. He gestures to the seats. Please let my staff know if you have any drink orders. And then he bows and resumes his post. Ah. You have all come. Mm -hmm. I trust the trip was not too hot for you. Mm -hmm. It was pretty easy. Do you have hunger? Do you have thirst? Please take a seat. Yeah, Luca like sits and immediately starts ordering like wine, something, anything glazed in honey. Um, Orders dessert first. <laughs> <laughs> that tracks. Uh, Lyra clearly didn't understand the question, but um, once she sees someone else pick up a menu, she does so as well. <laughs> they seem to have quite a tasty looking honey glazed ham. Uh, mm. with pineapple polenta and an apple cider sauce. Luca has a crazy sweet tooth, so she is all about it. What's the weirdest sounding thing on there? Lox. <laughs> L-O-X. There is having that. <laughs> no further... Uh, elaboration is given. Just the word locks. It looks funny and sounds weird, so she's going for it. What's the most flammable thing on the menu? <laughs> <laughs> the creme brulee. Okay, can I? Yeah, I'll get a, I'll get a creme brulee. Uh, completely arsoned. <laughs> And, uh, anything for savoury? Fuck it, surprise me, as long as it's on fire. <laughs> this is where they just bring in a candle and, like, you have performed excellently. <laughs> that I can do. <clears throat> so I have one locks, one of everything sweet that we have, and one on fire thing and a burnt creme brulee. Oh, and the wine for the table. Mm hmm. Uh, the barkeep disappears uh, out back. You hear um, some very confused uh, conversing from. Uh, from behind the door. And then he returns to go stand at the bar for a few minutes while your food is being prepared. And Gwendolyn will look at you all. Not that way. There we go. Oh, 
It is nice to know that you're all here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Would you like to know the exacts of your mission? Mm -hmm. I mean, hard to do it if you don't tell us, right? Well, there could also be a conversation to wait until the morning. We will not meet up with the captain until then. I have taken the liberty of hiring a room for you all. I wonder what it looks like. The room or the ship? Uh, um. Captain, maybe? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, uh, all of them. Look, it'll be fine, right? If you get tossed off the ship, I'll toss you back on the ship. And mm -hmm. if push comes to shove, I'll toss the ship into the other ship. I mean, if somebody tries to talk you off the ship, I'll just hit them in the back of their neck and they won't be able to move for, for like, you know, a minute. Well, I can see Wait. that you are all eager to get started. Mm hmm Very well. You are to meet a man by the name of Avery Payne. He doesn't hurt birds, does he? Not to my knowledge. Okay, good. He is captaining a ship called the Esmeralda. It has a uh, quite a substantial payload. And it is destined for an island far from here. Your job is two parts to assist with the operation of the ship itself, you know, making sure the rigging is tied down, repairing any damage, cooking, cleaning, helping with navigation. But there is also a problem. Recently, some ships were stolen from our uh, special harbour. We anticipate that they may reappear. If they do, and the thieves rear their ugly heads, your job, your primary job, will be to repel them by any means necessary. Mm -hmm. You are to ensure that as much of the payload reaches the island as possible. So, And like, if we were to take back any of these ships, like... That bonus? would be a significant bonus for you. If you were to capture the captains of those ships alive, there would be an even bigger bonus. Starts cracking my knuckles. Oh, I can do a live. I can <laughs> do a live. That would be much preferable, but if you cannot and you must leave them be, they will still be floating there for the next crew. As long as you note down exactly where they are. Mm -hmm. As long as they don't sink. We understood. Mm -hmm. Just not. Good. I see that my masters were right in hiring people as thoroughbred as yourselves. It is good to work with professionals. Yeah, professionals. Side eyes the fairy. Yep, professionals. Um, at this notable compliment, um, her smile somehow grows even bigger. <laughs> so, the receptionist, the one in the yellow over there, she will show you to your room. 
and I will meet you again in the morning after breakfast and take you to the harbour. Mm -hmm. Have a good evening. Bye. And she gets up to leave, nods goodbye at all of you, and then begins to walk out. Well, Lyra gives her a very vigorous wave. She doesn't look back. Uh, she talks to the receptionist for a few seconds and then walks out of your lives for the evening. Around this time, uh, dinner is brought out to you. Uh, a large bottle of a deep, bold red wine uh, is placed on the table along with three glasses. Uh, there is also a, uh, a keg of mead that is given to you, Luca. And Amazing. You are given your uh, polenta with a apple cider sauce, uh, a whole leg of honey roast ham, and whatever else I said was on that dish. Luca eats and drinks, honestly, like no human really should, but it doesn't seem to even affect her. <laughs> Uh, Samantha, you are given your on fire main course. Oh, that's good. It get it gets eaten whilst on fire. <laughs> what it is is a steak uh, with some potatoes. Uh, the steak appears to have been drizzled in some kind of like brandy sauce and then set on fire just before being delivered to you. I thought you were going to say ethanol then. Either or. I mean, same thing. Yeah, it's just not as high level ethanol. <laughs> but it is quite a nice spicy dish. And Lyra, you have a very delicate looking plate handed uh, or put before you. Uh, there is like a very thin, like wavery type of flat bread. Uh, and a almost cloud-like a smattering of what appears to be cream cheese and then some kind of fish like a gorgeous ruby red fish with chives hmm she look at this have no idea what anything on this plate is and just look at it like it's the most brilliant thing ever made um, and then just begin to eat random parts of it completely. It's delicious. The creme brulee has become blackened on top when it is handed to you, Samantha. Um, the other two receive sticky toffee puddings. The wine is similarly sweet and delicious, and you are okay. quite satisfied. Um, so I just want to make this clear. Lyra has never even smelled alcohol before, so... Okay. <laughs> just... Does she take? Oh, definitely. Okay. <laughs> um, first if, she, if she's given, then she takes. First real roll, uh, a, a, a constitution saving throw, please. Oh, okay. She may have never tried it before, but damn if she can't hold her liquor. <laughs> yeah just because of how absent-minded she is she doesn't even acknowledge that there's even alcohol in there <laughs> how have you managed to make two characters how have you managed to make a fairy that's like soulless it's impressive <laughs> a lot more cheerful than soulless hmm definitely it's it's a different kind of I don't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I like it's the different variety. Between, it's a difference between I don't give a fuck or I literally am physically unable to give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's being too stupid to give a fuck. You eat heartily, you drink even heartlier. And the evening seems to roll down, even the minstrel has disappeared. 
after the minstrel disappears, there's a short period of time where uh, Luca pulls out her pan flute that is clearly made of bone and starts playing that. <laughs> what does she play? I, have you guys ever heard any, like, bard chord? You know what, I, I will send you the song. <laughs> I th yeah, I think I know what you mean. Could, could you give me your best impression for the time being? Um, so it's like a bar core version of Hips Don't Lie. <laughs> Luca, Luca. The uh, patrons that are left appear to side eye one another and then hurry out of the tavern when you start playing. I don't know why they don't like us. It's so lovely. After a few hours, the receptionist comes over. Um, thank you all for continuing the lovely atmosphere. Uh, your beds are ready. May I show you to them? Oh, yes, please. Well, please follow me. Takes you over here. Unlocks the door. This is the room that you have been hired. Uh, we have set up a third bed over on the uh, window area. And then this for the other two of you. I run and jump on the bed. Lyra claims the window. <laughs> Enjoy your stay. Could have been worse, I could have given you the crib. <laughs> I mean, Larry would probably fit. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, might just sit here. <laughs> just sit there for the evening? I Do don't you... need to sleep. That, right, that's right. <laughs> if you're not immediately getting in the bed, Luca just kind of like starfishes. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> Sam will let you. It's, Sam is just going to sit there. Eerily at the end of the bed. God, that sounds horrific. She's just sitting there menacingly. Menace. Yep. Slightly glowing eyes in the middle of the night, like, yeah, this is fine. I feel like after traveling together for a couple months, Luca would honestly kind of be used to it. Yeah. It's and like, it wouldn't be creepy anymore. It's like a nightlight almost at this point. Like, you can't sleep without the glowing embers that are her eyes shining in from the darkness. Look, if you I, it's have... nice, she's posted right, right next to the door too, so like if anything happens. Yeah, because I've also she... just realised that that isn't technically a door in, in this map, it's just an opening. Uh, no, the door is there. It's just open. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I guess point still stands, it's technically just yeah. an opening, but yeah. at least there is a door built in. Uh, yeah, I just found this map online, as you can probably appreciate. Yeah. Uh, so I believe we have two starfishers, because I would like to believe Lyra, Lyra is also starfishing. Um, not initially, but eventually. Cool. <laughs> there's like, it's like a lo there's more pillows than this space shows. Mm. It's more just like you're just sleeping on a pillow fort than like yeah. any, on any form of mattress. Like, she starts out lying on her side, and then by like the time she wakes up, there's one leg over one side, one leg out over the out the window, um, like just everywhere. <laughs> there's like a big like anime like snot bubble that's like <laughs> kind of like going in and out and in and out from your nostril. Not quite. Okay, not quite that. Uh... <laughs> What's the word I'm looking for? Decorumless. Yes. Uh, and then morning comes. Uh, you awaken and exit your door to find Gwendolyn sitting before a rather large platter of uh, different breakfast foodstuffs. It's 
hard to tell it's morning. It's still quite dark and the storm outside is raging still. I swear that other sun better fucking come out soon, otherwise I'm going to be really, really grumpy. I mean, d d d both suns come out around the same time, right? I mean, oh, the f yes. they don't they don't show up. That's weird. Could you, could you picture the world with one sun, no suns? That'd be awful. I don't think mm. I specified. So well done, po like spotting that this is a pre calamity. You mentioned briefly. Uh, and also from from the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful map, it's crap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say it's pre-scuffed. This is po afterwards. It's post-scuffed. We're going to be the reason why it's scuffed. <laughs> no, that's Inqua. <laughs> Genuinely. Hey, hey, I know we're making an arms deal to Inqua. Don't lie to me. <laughs> this entire thing is just. Uh, I forgot the game. Never mind. No, I mean, yeah, I can't really argue with anything you just said. <laughs> uh, before you is mountains of pancakes, fruits, uh, like nut mixes, a couple of skewers of meat, some uh, boiled eggs. Uh, Lyra takes five minutes longer than everyone else to get out. <laughs> I believe that. Just um, hear you fall out the window. Yep. Um, not yourself. outside. <laughs> <laughs> this may be the last good meal you have for a few days. Mm -hmm. Absolutely stuffing her face. <laughs> no, definitely. I'll ask them to pack some more for them. That is probably smart. If you are done, would you like to come and see the airship? Yes, very much. Yes. Alright, yeah, let's go. Just stuffing rolls in her pockets. <laughs> uh, she takes you out of the... in down the quite winding um, mountain path that you climbed up the night before. Possibly raising the question of why you had to climb it at all. Uh, as you go down the mountain, the storm becomes lesser. Uh, the sun begins to poke through a little bit. And eventually she leads you through a cave. Which opens suddenly into a apparently quite hidden area. Welcome to Torahel's finest secret. Eyes wide open, just taking it all in, even though there's like literal John Curve on the side. <laughs> she still seems amazed. What can one do when the seas are so limited? Why well, take just get the rid skies. of the oceans? Oh yeah, that too. How high does this thing go? Theoretically, as high as the crew can breathe. Oh shit, we're going high then. <laughs> the Esmeralda, like many ships of its design, run on a individual power core. The core generates the sails, and the sails are what help it to fly over the sky. Quite ingenious, no? So, come timeline-wise, where are we? Like, is it is it in the middle of conflict between the two nations whose uh, names yes. I can't remember? Okay. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is pre calamity, but it is post war breaking out between Torahel and Black Robots. 
I am okay. working on some kind of like um, cliff notes sheet. Matt requested it a while ago, but uh, sometimes I get busy. Uh, but if you need me to share that with you, I can as well. That'd be nice. Even if Providence may never truly understand, I as a player would like to. <laughs> we call these ship designs Gimbasson in honour of their inventor. Gemba? Gemba? Who? What's, what's the inventor's name? Gembasson. Oh, so he just like actually called it like the exact same as his name. Okay. It's actually really cool. I wish I had something named after me. <laughs> she takes you down. Imagine there's stairs here. I just jumped the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lyra unconsciously floats down with the wings. <laughs> Sounds valid and real for both of you. Uh, and you see, huddling under an awning out of the way of the rain, is a rather dour-looking human-esque individual who is not looking happy to be existing. Very well, crew, may I introduce you to Avery? Hello. Does like a super lazy salute looking thing. <laughs> Greetings, my lovelies. You look so miserable. Tis the rain, my dear. Oh god, I can agree with that. It's not, it's just a little water. Water makes our sails not work quite so well. Makes the wood swell. Makes my crew not want to be out on the deck. Seriously? This is a ship and it, it can't handle water? It is not a kind of ship that often is meant to deal with lots of water. Doesn't it rain, like, pretty frequently? <laughs> Where we're going, we don't need rain. You're going to have to explain that more. You can't just say that. <laughs> I will leave you all to it, uh, Avery. Good luck. Everyone else? Very good luck. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And Gwendolyn will walk away and wave at you all. God, the temptation to change the timeline and push her off the edge. <laughs> <laughs> This is where something like Squad doesn't exist because we just pushed her off the edge. It's like, what have we done? Probably made it worse. We've invented Mega Squad. <laughs> That's why Squad was an, a lich because she was undead the whole time. I vibe with that. If you are all ready, have you been properly appraised of what it is that we are doing? Transporting goods? Indeed. We are transporting goods. To an island. Yes. Have you ever been to the Sanctum of Ichthos before? Uh... Probably not. That wouldn't surprise me. Very few people have. It requires flight. I can fly, but not there. Uh, I've never been there. I don't have, have I? I don't think so. It requires quite a significant amount of flight. Okay. But today will be your lucky day. We are all going there now. Savvy. Mm. 
Now tell me, do any of you actually know anything about ships? They are big and made of wood. Um, both of those things are correct. Gold star. Uh, um, usually they're in the water, so... Also correct. Gold star. I've, I've flown one. Oh, right? Oh, yeah, I did it in some time in... When I was younger. Well, you will be of the most help then. Maybe you can show your compatriots how it works. I have, like, flashbacks. I don't even have flashbacks. I have CGI-rendered plausible flashbacks <laughs> uh, of Lyra getting tossed off a ship and the horrors that might happen. Yeah, I can do that. Are you fully good? Your eyes just glazed over for like a second. I felt a disturbance. Something that I've not felt for quite some time. <laughs> anyway, yeah, sure. We are still waiting for the cargo to be loaded on. It is being transported especially, but uh, in the meantime, why don't you all familiarize yourself with the ship? Avery walks away and up to the helm, which hides behind there because I could only fit so much of the ship on this map. <laughs> um. As people Luke's are spreading. Gonna... Oh, go ahead. Okay. That's just one small. Um, as people are kind of aimlessly wandering off, uh, Lyra is going to absentmindedly uh, use Druidcraft to determine the weather for the next 24 hours. In this location specifically. <laughs> <laughs> so it's useless once you leave. Exactly. Okay. Uh, it, the rain is only going to get harder. Okay. And Luca? Uh, Luca is immediately going to go to the, I think, prow of the ship, wherever this is, and start messing with this crossbow. <laughs> From half the ship away, you hear, DO NOT TOUCH THAT! I put one finger on the wood and make no. a contact. <laughs> no! That will fire a bolt directly into the side of the mountain and quite possibly through someone's chest. You shouldn't have told her that. You really shouldn't have told her that. She may actually do it now. Avery will stomp back down the stairs. Stomp. Like a moody teenager. All the way over <laughs> to the front of the ship and he will physically remove the bolt from the ballista. Oh, come on! gonna fire it I do not want to take that chance this oh, then, now that it's unloaded it starts fiddling with the trigger <laughs> yes fine you may do whatever you want now it is unloaded but hey maybe you will get a chance to fire it anyway you do not know how much I would love that He will stomp back. Party pooper! He has, however, just put the bolt in one of these barrels along with all the other bolts. He I'm not gonna you... fire it right now while I'm being watched. <laughs> he gives you a very stern look of don't fucking try me. It's kind of like that that teen that like teenager thing where it's like if somebody tells you not to do something, you only want to do it more. Where she's just like making eye contact, just like touching it, not not firing it, just like <laughs> like when a cat is yeah. like, you see me doing this, I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm not firing it. I'm just testing your boundaries to the absolute maximum. Precisely. <laughs> I'm just if anyone's ever played the Doom re-release on 2016, yes. when in when he's trying to aim the BFG at Mars, he's just pressing the button constantly. I'm just imagining that with the cro with the crossbow trigger. 
<laughs> just like pretend like pow 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 Whoa. yeah and then like you know does it does it swivel at all does it aim or is it fixed it swivels but it's like very heavy and very slow i mean i have athletics <laughs> <laughs> you would be able to do it it would just take you some time uh, but in that time, the uh, a group of very mean-looking soldiers arrive in their bulky metal armor, and they begin to deposit a series of barrels here, uh, here, and here. Don't worry, I'm not bringing bothering to bring the tokens onto this map. They're on the next map. Mm -hmm. Luca just kind of like lean twos on the crossbow and like watches them all with like a serious face as if she has some sort of authority here while this is happening. <laughs> uh, once all the barrels are loaded, one of the uh, the guards stands up, puts a, a very small flute in his mouth, and then goes, <whistles> and Avery will respond in kind. I don't trust my lips to do that again. Uh, it did cut off after like a millisecond, so it's fine. I oh, will, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not, wasn't loud or sustained enough. Yeah. Avery will take the helm. Smile at all of you. Ready? Mm -hmm. And the Esmeralda begins to sail away on the sky. The weather gets rapidly better. Should have added you guys. My god. That is a lot of lemonade. Uh, yep, yeah, the sun really begins to beat down on you uh, throughout the day as the Esmeralda begins to make its way from Drea Trenor to the Sanctum of Ixos. Is there anything in particular that you guys want to attend to? While I eat my I'll help these guys pushing the wheel, I'm pretty strong. Yeah, they're um like they're pushing it quite slowly. Uh when you offer they state that it requires a uh, very particular speed. I'm super fast. I don't know what you No, it is not a maximum speed that is needed. It is a consistent medium speed. It is endurance, <sighs> not speed. Sure. Okay, whatever. <laughs> oh dear. Um, and then I guess I will just like kind of sit and watch these guys work and occasionally start, like I start playing my pan flute, but it's going to be a much more eerie song this time because I'm being a moody teenager. <laughs> the, um, the wheel that they're turning makes a thunk, thunk. Thunk, thunk, thunk kind of rhythm. Which might be like a good rhythm for you to play a flute to. Super slow, but okay. <laughs> Lyra is having her queen of the world moment. Um... She's She started out just looking out ahead, but now she's kind of sat with her back to the railing. Um, and she's got out a pack of cards and is playing with something else. Um, well, the thing is, no one else can tell because it seems to be invisible. <laughs> when you... before you get bored of looking out, would you like to give me a perception check to see if you can spot anything? Okay. expected <laughs> oh pretty clouds yeah you see a mountain passing beneath that's kind of neat mm -hmm. uh, 
and Samantha? Uh, probably uh, like just helping out with more like admin based duties because she's done this before, she's been a captain before at some point. Mm -hmm. So, just helping around. Yeah, you there's um, there's like a map uh, near where Avery is, uh, so you can help with like navigation. Uh, you see that this fella is like doing all the rigging by himself, making sure that all these sails are like properly fastened in their place. I mean, if he wants help with that, I will go over and help. Because I'm strong. <laughs> uh, I will need a slight of hand check, uh, or a survival check, for how good you're able to knot a knot. Oh yeah, I'll take survival plus <laughs> sleight of hand. Uh, I will... Where is it? Survival. I will also add a d6 from knowledge of the past, so that is a 19. It is a knotty business, but you're able to get through it. I crunch and munch. And you are able to help the first mate, Will, uh, in making sure all the rigging is accurately secured. He then excuses you and says that he could do with some help cooking lunch. If you are willing. Or anyone I mean, else. I'm willing to help if no one else is. Don't know how good it's going to be. Uh, Lyra will offer to help, even though it's probably a bad idea that she does. <laughs> well, yeah, Luca will hear the word lunch, and it's already like walking over. Okay, right. good. I'll let them do go and handle it. Too many cooks. Too many hands oh, yeah. situation. I'll, I'll back out of the kitchen, because it mainly keeps what uh, Samantha considers the child and the other person who isn't a child <laughs> off the main deck, which is probably the most dangerous place. That's fair. <laughs> kind of babysitting. Yeah, she, she's quite protective of the other two in a way. But, like, if you make an ass of yourself, she lets you make an ass of yourself. You know, yeah. learning by experience. Lunch is mainly, it seems to just be oats. Uh, there are there is a barrel full of limes as well, and Will is like, oh, I figured we'd make some kind of uh, uh, congee. We've got some honey left over. We absolutely have to use the honey. He begins to cook the oats like right down and asks anyone who's helping to help him zest and juice all of the limes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. Lyra will do her best. <laughs> Takes you guys a while, but between you all, uh, there is quite a lot of stinging eyes and itchy noses as all the limes have been juiced. Uh, despite this, Lyra never stops smiling. Uh, there seems to be a tear coming to her eye. Oh, definitely. Or maybe the smile is more of a grimace from the acidity. <laughs> I love nah, how positive really. she is. <laughs> oh, yeah. Eventually, you eat uh, what is essentially just stodge with some acidity and some sweetness. Luca makes a face like just the whole time she's eating. Just a, just a. Mm. 
Just a picky eater face. Cool. And finishes the rolls that she had in her pocket. <laughs> Uh, did the other two react a little better? Oh, definitely. <laughs> the rest of the crew seem to also break for lunch. Um, they all seem to sit um, on like the mid deck area. And I assume you guys join? Mm-hmm. I'll make sure the ship keeps running, consider the fact I don't need to eat. <laughs> Fair enough. I can, I can choose not to and give them the reactions I'm seeing. No. I'll just photosynthesize. It's all good. <clears throat> uh, Lyra, you go down as well? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I might select your token. Oh, no idea. The wrong layer. Not do it. <laughs> uh, as you're all enjoying a lovely lunch, there is a small hiss from the front of the ship that you can hear, and then suddenly everything explodes. No. Yeah. Uh, shit, 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 shit. Uh, I, I was like, can I run over there? Fucking bitch, <laughs> Pretty fast. it's the pitch. Quick, get it out. Can I just run over there or are we going into an initiative? I think initiative would be best just to maintain a structure of seconds. Well, weirdly, it's not the person who's not eating. It's the person who's always thinking the best. Um, so... Lyra saw explosion. Like, are things on fire right now? Mm-hmm. Okay. One of the barrels over there seemed to have exploded. <laughs> well, um... And, yeah. Now the wood's on fire. Okay, so Lyra will fly over this way. Uh, well, actually, <laughs> no, she. No, um, I think she just went downstairs. Mm -hmm. I don't think she's stupid enough to know that, like, to not know that if you fly on a flying thing, you will get left behind. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then seeing fire, solution to fire is water. So, <laughs> oh, I really hope she knows that. Um, Do I know that? That's a good point. What is tar? Like, in this. I imagine alchemist fire is pretty widely known at, in this, because it's a pretty technological era. Like, even if we haven't seen it, we probably have heard of it. So, as she's kind of stood here, she seems to begin to cast some sort of spell. Um, as what looks to be a sort of ball of water begins to uh, manifest between her hands. I just want to make sure, like, would anyone attempt to stop her? Yeah, I mean, it, unless you asked, I mean, toxins a free action, but you're also like, you're going first in initiative, so nobody mm -hmm. can really stop you. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then, in that case, I'm going to cast Create Water at third level. <laughs> Over the entire thing. <laughs> so 30 gallons of rain. Effectively. 
let me transfer that to units I understand better. <laughs> it's a, it's one fuck ton of water. Oh yeah, a hun hundred and thirty six liters. Whoa. They're not that much, but like enough to kind of out it. <laughs> I mean, that's th that's thirty gallons. Well, the rain falls in a thirty foot queue, so it's like it wouldn't just be in like one spot. Oh yeah. Yeah. And also, it's like up to the amount, so it wouldn't be exactly. Okay, 30. that's fine. I was just the <laughs> hundred and thirty something liters. The ship just fucking dips forward and goes into a nosedive. <laughs> Thankfully, the uh, the water would naturally run off in these two areas where the um, like balcony area preventing you from falling off disappears. But <clears throat> with that incredibly timely spell, the water is the fire is immediately drenched. And we would go out of initiative. <laughs> Avery will continue to run over. Um, Lyra will, like, as Avery's running down, she'll just turn around and give a thumbs up, of, like, triumphantly. <laughs> Not exactly knowing what happened. He's yeah, Luca like... kind of, like, is just, like, just jumps down to here. She has slow falls into the matter and just keeps running. <laughs> you okay? What the... Why did that happen? Why did that happen? No idea. Oh god, no, no. Avery, you okay, man? He stands up, collects himself, and beckons the two or the three, if Samantha's uh, wanting to come with, over. Assuming I can leave the steering wheel of an entire airship unattended, then yes. There's like um, there's like a couple of uh, locks that you can implement to keep it going in one location while no one's actively handling it. Yeah, I'll do that and then come over. Oh, do you need your magic back, Lyra? Hmm. Oh, um, I'll just have a bit of a rest. I'll be fine. Okay. Right, yes, why did that happen? Sabotage. Ooh, spicy. Wait, so like someone did that? He points to a... Uh, in between the two barrels that appears to be a very fine like line of soot, soot that goes from this... Uh, like nearby this rope and barrel of apples directly to the barrel that caught on fire. Someone lit a fuse. Okay, uh, Luca goes into like straight up just scanning everything and she knows that people like, can turn invisible. Uh, so she's like scanning to see if there's any like footprints, any inconsistencies, any like chameleon like shifting in the area. Hmm. Uh, please roll me a perception check. <sighs> Natural one. She's too caught off guard. I like to think she starts looking and then accidentally blows up some soot into her own eyes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe this and that just becomes a thing. Just smacks her in the head. Oh shit, but does anyone know magic people? Do you have see invisibility? Because ow, ow my eye. I mean, I might have something. Uh, give me a second. I'm gonna go, like, stare at the, the gunpowder, pretty much. Uh, and then I'm gonna look up, there is just fire in my eyes. I'm gonna use magical awareness. Where's the magic, Ren? <laughs> Someone appears to have recently cast Sending in this area. Check the barrel, check the barrel! <laughs> right, do, do I know whether or not Sending could be used to remote start a spell? 
Uh, it is a telepathic thing. And while fire lives in your brain, you're smart enough to realise that it doesn't do that for most people. Most? Oh my god, we're dealing with pyrokinesis. Okay. Um... Sparky, sparky, boom, man. Kaboom? No, Rico. No kaboom. Not here. <laughs> Especially not here. <laughs> uh, okay. Sam will just lock up. Right. Well, someone did some lovely, lovely sending. Okay, Avery. Who in your crew can cast sending? No one that I'm aware of. Right. Are you overly attached to them? Only in so far as I depend on them to get us to our destination. So, okay, what's the minimum crew complement that we need to keep the ship in the air? Four. Not including the helmsman. So, f okay, we only need one of them to live. It's a good ratio. If we line them all up, we can just all right. them off the edge. Alright, Samantha, that's... I don't know if... And as I was like, saying this, she's like trying to empty this apple barrel to see if somebody is possibly hiding in here. <laughs> <laughs> no one appears to be hiding in there. And then she starts eating an apple. I don't know if that's like the best idea because it is like killing people. It's just like it's not gonna help. The apple appears to be slightly overripe, turning onto rotten. It's like mush in your mouth, but that is when apples are sweetest. You know what? Texture doesn't bother her that much. She continues eating it. My definitely neurotypical brain cannot wrap my head around that, but okay. <laughs> um, so, as everyone's trying to figure things out, something that you know, is stood nearby Lila or Lyra um, is going to see if Avery's concern is genuine with uh, hopefully an insight. Are you going to see if Avery's concern is genuine? Yes. Nice. Okay. It, he does appear to be quite genuine. He's, he's um. almost insulted. As, uh... So some of the more perceptive people will be able to hear uh, Just from nearby. Just, from, like, a little bit behind Lyra. Okay, okay. Well, that was clearly a remote thing, if nothing else. So it's I, I mean, sending's just words, so yeah. like... It was a remote order. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, who put the barrel on here in the first place? I mean, do these barrels just, like, go here normally? These are part of the payload that we are meant to deliver. Barrels of tar. <sighs> Or pitch, if you prefer. They are what one may refer to as... Uh, what, what was the phrase that they used? Um, innately fire affinitive. Yeah. I mean, I wonder if it was meant to go off now. You know? Maybe it was a missending. Thing kind of happens, you know. Okay, let's find the crew. Why don't we just line them all up and like make sure they're all here? You don't have time to do that because as you turn around, you hear "yee oh My God, motherfucker! <laughs> yes, um, a uh, chain is shot out from a ballista, and hits the side of the um, Esmeralda. I assume we're going into initiative again? <laughs> Get him, boys! I have such a dumb idea. I also have dumb ideas. <laughs> you might be about to see the reason why Samantha is known as a nutcase. I'm going to do something funny, just so you guys know. Yes! <laughs> it is a one-shot. When else can you be funny? 
that's that sounds like the like the best burn I've heard. Like you are funny nowhere else but this one shot. Good luck. Oh, it wasn't meant to be that way, but okay. Uh, I'm I'm messing around. Okay. I know. Also, I just need to check something quickly. Oh dear God, the, f the chaos, the, the three foot chaos gremlins first. This is fine. Uh, it's okay. I just realised that I forgot to select a character sheet for Avery, who would definitely be wanting to fight in this right now. So please, just give me a sec. No worries. Yeah, I'm checking something anyway, so. <laughs> Okay. Just, just out, like, are we overly attached to this airship? You know. I mean, we don't get a bonus if we bring back the extra airship. We do get a bonus if we bring back the extra captain alive. So okay, guess what I'm doing? Bonus. You get a bonus for both. For both, okay. Yeah, you get a bonus or a bonus bonus. I mean, I'm happy with just a singular bonus because I've thought about this in my mind and it's funny. Well, first of all, hello, chaos. Oh, twenty-one! Holy shit! Um, Lyra seeing the fuck is this cackling. Dinner? Familiar. <laughs> oh, right. Um, Sorry. No worries. As um, to seeing crazy cackling people that are obviously very bad and evil, um, Lyra gets right in front of the chain, and you see what looks to be an intense amount of crackling lightning just begin to swirl around her as it goes between her hands, and she shoots it forward as I'm casting a lightning bolt. <laughs> Straight down. OMG, they're all lined up! OMG! <laughs> yes! So. Huh. Also, yeah, that does ignite things if that means anything. <laughs> so I imagine this is fine. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. And the line is five feet wide, so it should also catch these yeah, guys. Yeah, that's what I was trying to work out as well. Okay, so we will go for the leader first. And then the four minions. Uh, so... Why do they all have advantage? Um, because whenever you create a character sheet on... Um, Roll 20, it automatically sets it to roll, like, toggle advantage. Ha! Huh. And I can't be fucked to, to take the turn that off for everyone, so I just take the first roll. If needs be. So yeah, this massive bolt of lightning just flashes forward and just strikes everything in the ship ahead. Okay, um, well, um, these two only had 32 HP. <laughs> okay. And the others um, take half of 35, which is... 16? Six, no. 17? Yes, yeah, 16. 17. 17. You round down always, so... Yeah. They take a lot of damage, as does their leader. Okay. Uh, okay. And then... Um, bonus action. <laughs> I am going to use a little cool thing I have. Uh, sure, yep. That's gonna go right there. <laughs> and... Going to poke uh, this guy. This guy. But where they pokey? Thirteen hit. Uh, that does not hit. Okay. Um. Actually, it's going to go right here. 
distance 10 feet from each other. That's understandable. Um, yeah, and then Lyra is going to go back a bit and wait. Cool. I presume that is end of turn. Luca. Is this friend or foe, this green person on the ship? Uh, that is um, someone that looks to be... Like, she was behind Ly Lyra from the last you saw. Um, the sudden arrival seemed to spook her at invisibility. Have I have I seen this person before or not? Um, Possibly once or twice, I'm assuming, yeah. if you guys have been travelling together for a few months. I mean, I say we've been together for once, but I at least know that this is, this is friend, not foe. Uh, likely, yeah. Okay. You would know that uh, she is Lyra's smart side. You could say. <laughs> so things that uh, that Luca would know about the universe that I don't. How safe or not safe would it be to run across the chain connecting these two two ships? It's quite a thick chain. Uh, if you were sure of your footing, you'd be able to run across it as normal terrain. Uh, it seems to be that that would have been the plan of the people that are now either quite wounded or deceased. Alright, in that case I'm going to step of the wind, my speed becomes 90. <laughs> Set the key point for that. And I'm just going to go across this chain. Tickly-dickly. This is currently on fire, by the way. I'm okay with that. Um, <laughs> that's only 55. So zero. Yeah, I can get all the way up to him. Easily. That's even without dashing. And I'm going to stand somewhere that's not going to be in the fire. <laughs> like, basically everywhere is on the fire right now. I'm okay with this. You would have had to have gone through some fire to get to where you are right now. Sure. How much, how much damage is that? Uh, that would be 1d6 fire damage for every one square you'd have had to have moved through. Oh, come on! <laughs> you wouldn't make the NPCs take that. Yes, I would. Hmm, is there something I can do to not run through the fire? Ooh, can I jump over it? My jump, my jump... Uh, is three times when I step of the wind. Uh, yeah, that would take away some of your movement speed. Ah, uh, that's okay. I was only I was only using like half because I when I step of the wind I have like ninety as my base right. movement speed, and I can also bonus action dash if I need to. I think when you jump, it's like a minimum of like ten feet of movement is used, but you would absolutely be able to jump over. Then that's what I do. I would just jump, 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 and then I think I'll land here, because that's not on fire. Let me just work this out. You started here? No, you started, like, over here. That's 30. So by the time you get onto the ship, it's already 60 feet is moved. Yeah, uh, but I can also dash as a bonus action when I step of the wind, so I, I can go ninety twice. Okay. okay. So I have a hundred and eighty. Let's ninety times two. One hundred and eighty total. Yeah. Okay. That. Yep. Yeah. Then you definitely have enough movement to make it up to the leader. Uh, her name is Copperhead. Not that it's gonna matter, it seems. Uh, and then I'm gonna take the attack action, non-lethal, because I want money. Um, and I'm just gonna. I can attack twice because I have extra attack, so I'm just going to do that. Mm -hmm. And just so you know, I have Kensei, so my attacks are all, like, you know, they're all magical at this level. 
even though I have a plus one sword, so whatever. Good to know. And that is a miss. All right, I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use my key fueled, what is it called? I have an ability to add. Focused aim. I'm going to use my focused aim ability. Um, I'm going to spend two key points to get that up to 17. A 17 hits for 13 damage. Yep, uh, and then I will, you know, extra attack, so I'm attacking twice. That does hit for nine. And I will Stunning Strike on the second one. And what does that do? Uh, they have to beat a, I believe it's con, DC is 13? Yeah, a con DC 13, or be stunned. Rats, okay. And I think I had to use my bonus action to move, so that's my turn. Okay. Which makes it Zinder's turn. Yes. Um, so, assessing the situation, um, looking bored as tired as fuck, um, she is simply going to, let's see, so, got that, okay. Going to use... Uh, ah, just out of Okay. 40 foot fly speed. To just quickly get over to this side. And then... Kind of... Um using the fire to kind of hide behind going to use her action to turn invisible okay as per the commands of lyra interesting anything else nope all right samantha renathi solis please Honestly, I think they've got this in hand. I'm kind of proud with the amount of fire you guys have got going on. Makes me happy. The basket. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20. Right. I would like to rage. Because barbarian time. Uh, and because of that, I get to roll on the wild magic table. Oh, boy. Barbarians. Whee! D8, let's go. Two. What's two on this thing? Let's go. <laughs> Yes. It's the one I wanted. What uh, teleport? It's the teleport one. Oh, boy. So, <laughs> I've moved 20. Uh, i got another 20, so 5, 10, 15, 20. I'm then going to teleport 30. Uh-huh. To the yeah, so yeah. I, uh, da -da, so I end up there. The one full unoccupied space that is not on fire. Yep. These these two fine individuals are next to me. That they they are conscious. I don't like that. And you know what? I'm gonna make it reckless as well. This is a pretty reckless move. Do either of those hit? <laughs> Natural twenty. Uh, being <laughs> reckless, that would be with advantage. Yes. Yeah. It um, means they have advantage on me as well. That is a yes, and also a yes. Ah, wonderful. Sorry, I mean a yes and a yes. So, we'll go with that guy to take the non-crit. Okay. And then I, there's a teleport in, just bring the fucking greatsword down on this guy's shoulder. Non-lethal, of course. So that's 19 points of damage. Um, Non-lethal, you said. Yeah, yeah, I... Look, I don't want these individuals to die. I want them to bask in the sun's lovely, lovely grace. And then die afterwards. I feel like I've heard that from someone else. Oh, Sunny. I mean, Samantha does have a sunny disposition. <laughs> so yeah, knock one out, injure the other one. 
smile with malicious intent. Cool. Uh, That's everything. Turn over? Okay. Yeah. Well, um... Avery is going to move over here and start trying to extricate the bolt uh, from where it has struck into the side of the ship. Copperhead is going to turn towards you. I keep trying to say Audra, Luca. Yeah, I pick a lot of names that end with A. Please go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to turn to you. Ah! And Longsword attack you. I'm assuming second hits. Second one does hit. Cool. And nine slashing damage. Luca kind of smiles in probably a, a way that would be perceived as creepy, but she's actually kind of enjoying it. She likes getting <laughs> hit back. <laughs> uh, at the end of her turn, Lyra, you feel a presence behind you. Oh no. The saboteur has been uncovered. Well, uh, you look it. <laughs> hits for seven bludgeoning damage as oh. a mace is, re is produced from nowhere. And then finally <laughs> uh, the last surviving uh, peon on the ship will turn to you if I can get Roll20 to do that for me. Ah, he turns around and off the ship. <laughs> Wonderful. I couldn't, I couldn't, um, because the this kept trying to move the fire. Yeah, yeah, You'll see in the, in the recording. Um, and it, they're going to, uh, raise their mace against you. Go. It's clobbering time. But he accidentally just puts out that fire instead. With his clobbering. Okay, that, that makes her angry. <laughs> uh, at the end of that turn, not that any of you are currently on that ship uh, to feel it anyway, but a second impact is felt. Ah, fuck, man! <laughs> yeah, you remember how they were all like specifically more than one ship with Stalin? I do remember, I just didn't expect coordination! <laughs> My god. Yahoo! Get him, sis! <laughs> you hear the captain of this ship shouting? Oh god. Yeah, that alone makes you want to kill him. And with that, it is Lyra's turn. So after getting bonked on the head by this mean person, um, she's going to look back with a very pouty face and then step away. <laughs> that misses. Um, and then that's five, ten, let's go for like fifteen. And as she's running back, um, a couple bolts of water will kind of appear in the palm of her hand as they shoot forward. As I am going to the ever infamous thing of my class and blast them. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! You're blasting uh, the the saboteur. Yes. One hits. That's my one. That's the right one. <laughs> For twelve damage. Awesome. And then... Did you take um, the um, um, invocation? Yes. Nice. The one that boosts damage by Chris Neville. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then... Let's see. Um, let's see what I can do here. Um, so, 
I'm just like I'm playing with Pact of the Chain. I don't like figuring out what Familia can do. Um, sure thing. Okay. And so in that case, bonus action, I'm going to have this move a bit and smack this guy. Mm -hmm. uh, so, oh, 17 to hit. And that's a hit. Five core damage and movement is reduced by 10. Okay, is that like non-lethal damage or just regular damage? It's, it's like... Can it be non-lethalized or...? I wouldn't think so since it's like a magical damage type. Well then he dead because he only had 4 HP. Well. And then going to move. Um, it's going to actually stay here for now and face the person here. Cool beans. That's your turn for now then? Mm hmm. Luca. Damn how, fucked, how fucked up or not is this guy looking? The guy next to you. Uh, yeah. She is looking over halfway dead. Whoa. <laughs> and are they taking fire damage every turn from like standing on fire or like? <laughs> uh, I mean, technically only things that weren't like worn or equipped. Get gotcha. So the, the ground underneath her is like, so, like she's fine. You're you're in this like circle surrounded by fire, but you yourselves are not on fire. Understood. Understood. That's fair and valid. All right, um, so I'm going to do uh, one regular attack with sword. I just want to say how much I absolutely love the artwork for this character, though, and I will link it very quickly. Absolutely do. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to take one unarmed strike as my second attack. So that I can use the uh, Agile Parry ability for Tensei, and my AC goes up by two. Uh, both of those hits. Perfect. Um, and then I will use a key point to uh, Flurry of Blows. Okay, and how do you want to do this? <laughs> I'm just knocking this this person's ass out. <laughs> so, uh, so I'll level you with you. They had 20 HP left, so 5 HP left after your longsword attack and your first unarmed unarmed strike. Oh, okay. So, so, the so the, I would have I would have hit them with the first unarmed whatever, and they would have been out. Gotcha. Uh, oh shit! No, yep. Yeah, sorry. No, the a AC was 17. So actually, okay, okay. You would have needed. So I would have. Okay, gotcha. Understood. But um, so it's like I kind of smack him with my longsword, and then I like I see that they're like starting to get like woozy and go down. So I just kind of shift the longsword to one to one hand because it's you know it's versatile, and I just start like you know like speed bagging them <laughs> with my off hand. I think I get what you mean. Directly in the face. Uh, her uh, Viking helmet flies off and may be found a thousand years from now, uh, buried in uh, the sands. Smells like rain. Looks like rain. Sorry, I just realised it smelled like rain around here, but all the windows are open, so if it mm. suddenly starts raining, I'm gonna need to close some windows. Certainly. <laughs> yeah, it is, like, I believe it's forecasted to rain over the next few days, so. Yes, it is forecasted to have light rain today. Nice break from the heat, though. It kind of sucks, because yeah. for dinner I'm planning my partner and I are planning on uh, lighting a, a barbecue and having some oh. burgers. Okay. Have one inside your house. It's all good. <laughs> Burn everything to the ground. <laughs> Look, as long as it's controlled, it's fine. <laughs> Look, all ovens are, right, uh, enslaved sons. <laughs> bound to the will of humanity. I'm writing all of this shit down to make use in the main campaign. I'm terrified. I've effectively made Rotom from Pokemon. I'm glad. Look, first we had Graven the Sword Stopper, Slayer, or whatever he's called. 
And now we've got someone bitching about uh, enslaved sons. Like, this is why it's a collaborative storytelling game. I'm I'm glad it's been described as me bitching about enslaved sons. I'm proud of this. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, it's non-lethal, so this person's not dead, just unconscious. Because I okay. want to bring them back alive. Yeah, you you give like a good uh, slash, uh, which basically like like slashes their sort their shield in two. Um, they throw their shield away. You put your sword away and you give just a quick one two punch on the foreheads and it's like oh they just go out like a light perfect and i still have my movement so i'm gonna just throw them over my shoulder (laughs) Mm -hmm. um and move as far as i can it looks like i can kind of use like the outer railing of the ship is not on fire yeah that's true you could like run across that area because yeah like you wouldn't be able to run over this area because it's currently on fire, but you could get... Okay. I could, like, run... I could, like, run, like, ten feet to here, and then go to here, um, and then go to here, and then start running across this railing. With as much movement as I have. So Either that's, like, ten... Once you hit here, you are Thirty... Uh, what's your movement speed this turn? Forty-five is also, right now. I commend you for uh, your grasp of martial classes despite not having played one in quite a while well i grabbed kensei because i've seen bailey play chance and he mm. th- they had a few levels in kensei for a while so i was like he did yeah. i should be able to get next to my friend though by my unless i'm encumbered by this guy um girl but yeah woman the, the fucking degenerate pirate yeah yeah But yeah, that, that I should be able to get there, at least with my speed. And that's not even using all my speed, but it's you... crowded over here. <laughs> you balance on the balcony of the burning ship with a body slung over your shoulders. I'm a monk, this is not a big deal. Respect. <laughs> huh? Yeah, <laughs> yep, fair enough. Discord played up. Um... Luca has run along the railings like a fucking anime hero, uh, and then just like landed holding a body over her shoulder next to you, like just a, a fucking monk. So, are we like getting off the ship since it's actively burning? Or I know you like fire, but. Oh, I love fire. I was planning to use this ship as a mace originally, so what I think I'm going to do is go to the other ship, I'm going to detach it, and then throw this ship at that ship. I'm I'm fine with that. Okay, cool. Although I kind of want that other captain also because mummy. I mean, one's good, right? I'd really like two though. I'm not gonna be able to buy a vacation house with just one. Okay. And that's my turn. <laughs> This one's going to move one. <laughs> and land on the Esmeralda. Zinda, what uh, commands have you been told to do? So, realising that everything on here is going, all gone, um, Zinda is going to use action to... Um, let's see, yeah, I'm gonna dash while invisible, and go here, just fly right behind this person. Cool. And... Whilst invisible. That. Yep. So the saboteur does not know this. Mm-hmm. Unless they happen to have true sight, which would be a choice. Yeah, definitely. Um, also, I should probably post this, just so you're aware how it works. Um, ah. And then, um, that's going to be it for now. This guy's also going to dash over. But he's 
gonna have to wait on the chain for a little while longer. Samantha, shit's on fire, yo. I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, let's After see. After the morning that you have had with the rain. Ugh, cringe. Um, right. So that's perfect. So I'm going to run that initial 30 feet, <laughs> oh, no! teleport 30 no! feet, and then move. You put... Look, okay, I can't use the mace as a ship because this version of Samantha gives a shit about their allies. I'm now going to use this thing and I'm going to violate a l probably a few war crime laws for this. But, yeah, I'm going to move there, pretty much. Full movement, bonus action. <laughs> You might... So Luca just sees Samantha just incinerate and then reappear on the ship. <laughs> you might violate the Honor Lembo Convention. Is that a thing? Uh... I know it's a thing, but is it a thing at this point in time? Am, I the, re <laughs> am I the reason it gets invented? <laughs> Our entire group is the reason it gets invented, let's be real. <laughs> Okay, yeah, in any when case... I, uh, when Dean asked a very pertinent question, I did answer truthfully. True. Uh, well, I'm going to spin this thing around. The map, there is basically just one place that stayed the same between, uh, well, maps. Hmm. I did like the map. Thanks. I'll post it here so you can browse further. Ooh, it's very green. Uh, it's weird, isn't it? It's weird to see. The colour green is a weird colour. Anyway, I'm going to go... I don't know. It cries it's... in Luigi. Look, Luigi is based. We love Luigi. Oh, yeah. That sounded more like Wario. Anyway, moving on. Yeah. I'm going to spin this thing around. Uh, Yeah. That. <laughs> I'd like to... I'd like to... <laughs> Yes, please. Uh, you would need to load it because it has been unloaded thanks to a certain um, ally of yours. That would take a bonus action if you still have one. I do not. Yeah, angry. I have to teleport. The turning and the loading altogether would take an action. I accept this. I'm going to point it at... Can I point it at the captain with malicious intent you can, as an intimidation? You can point it and you can load it. And I will allow you to even utter a small phrase with uh, intimidating intent. But I cannot allow you to fire it this turn. Oh, that's more than fine. Uh, so, what would uh, Samantha say intimidatingly towards... Someone who looks like this. Uh, in Primordial, uh, she just points the heaviest crossbow Basis. she's ever seen oh, okay. in an like Huh? Uh, I thought that you assumed Primordial because they look like they were a Genesai. Oh, no, it's because my logic is the sun is old as fuck. The sun would probably speak primordial. <laughs> the Samantha speaks primordial. Okay, fair enough. My apologies uh, for interrupting. No, nah, it's all good. She's just going to point it at him and just say fuck around and find out. <laughs> That's it. He does he do really cool. That jacket, that jacket is vibes. Less fire than I'd like, but I accept this. Please roll me an intimidation check. Yes. Uh, where are we, intimidation? Yeah, that, that, that tracks. It may work, it may not. Let's see. We will find out. Avery is going to move over to the person that he thought was a crewmate of his. You. How could you? You failed me. You never wanted the money, did you? Oh, fuck Avery! 
Oh god damn. Well, that one of those wasn't meant to be a, a crit, but we'll take it anyway, because I think that might be enough to kill him. He had 20 HP remaining, and if we just take the 6 and then the 9 and the that's exactly five, 20. that's exactly 20. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he is not concerned about taking a captive of this individual right this second, but he might regret that in a minute. Uh, so it is <coughs> Bromley's turn. Yes, that's right. The super cool uh, pirate names of Copperhead and Bromley. How far have I moved? Okay. He is going to throw a dagger at the barrels of pitch. And yet he does not hit, or at least hit deep enough to cause anything interesting to happen to the pitch. You, you are dead. The last of the pirates embarks onto the Esmeralda Lyra. Well, um, first order business, bonus action. This is going to move 30 feet and just kind of vibe on the chain. Um, and then I'm going to use movement to fly up on top of the barrels here. Uh, to about like they are here. About ten feet tall. Yep. Um, and gonna yeah, let's go with like. Let you know what. Yeah, I can definitely reach him. <laughs> Going for the big guy over this side. And then one and two. <laughs> one hits. Pulling an arrow as he did again. <laughs> and that uh, seems to knock off part of his armor. Anything you know, else? I wonder if, wonder if it's going to be a theme where short characters in your campaigns only hit half the time. <laughs> <laughs> and I they're going to move back. It. I know. Um. I'm going to move back a bit and just kind of sit here. All right. Luca. All right. Um, this tentacle doesn't hurt me unless it attacks me, right? Nope. Okay. Great. So I am going to bonus action Misty Step so I don't have to run through fire. Uh, 30 feet. So I'm basically right where this is with uh, mm -hmm. Copperhead still on my shoulder, but I can't move that token. Great. Um, and then I have 45 feet of movement. So let's. 20 feet ish out in the chain. And then another 25 to look right here. That's perfect. Great. And these are all non friendlies. So, correct? They don't look friendly. Uh, and I've just given you the ability to c control the. the... Perfect. Thank you. The <laughs> now I, have to, I can stop bothering you for it. <laughs> That's cool. I but I assume you'd probably drop it now anyway. Um, I I would think I would like I don't know if it's a free object interaction, but can I quickly tie him to the this little wheel here? Tying specifically would be like a bonus action or an, or an action. Okay. Because it's just, just quite involved. I'll just set him. I'll just set him down. It's fine. <laughs> And then I still have my action, so I'm going to start wailing on these guys. I will start with the guy on my right. Mr. White Shirt Man. 
Yes. Bro in the white shirt. I'm gonna start I'm gonna be two handing my sword again. Hit. Still up? Oh yeah. Alright, I hit again. Another hit and still up, but not healthy. <laughs> not looking great. Okay, got it. Uh and that's this turn. Um let me just do some math, sorry. I actually have that much HP left. Cool. And that's your turn? Yeah, because I had a bonus action Misty stepped, then I moved, and then I did my attack, so that's all I got. Cool. This guy's gonna clear the way for his frenzies to come along. And he's going to mace you one, two. Second one hits. Eight of the bludgeoning damage. And it is Zan Zinder's turn. Um, yet again, not being able to reach her intended target. It's going to, again, still invisible, fly behind this crowd here, and just sit here for the time. Just vibe. Got you. <clears throat> well, it's just another person is going to disembark and just start wailing on the nearest person. So that would be a four with the 21. Gotcha. Samantha. Yes. This chap. I just realised that this guy was like non-lethally killed and was then just like left there on this burning ship. <laughs> I mean, and the fire is like spreading, guys. Like, like, okay. Yeah, I wasn't too worried. I mean, I, I know, but like Samantha didn't pick him up, so you know that was a choice. Yeah, I mean, it was a choice. Exactly. I, I, I said I'd spare him and let him embrace the flames. I never said in what order. Wait, no, that is an order. Wait. <laughs> you would Look, so, really Samantha's enjoy the, the first wisdom. Law trilogy by Joe Abercrombie. I probably would. I'd also like to read that book that I posted before the session. Remind me? Uh, the HP Lovecraft one. Oh. I can that might be good Damn fun. dude, you fucked up, Lititut. Yep. Yeah, I'd like yeah. to hit this guy with a massive crossbow. Please. <laughs> uh, big heckin' crossbow. Uh, you big heckin' crossbow. The captain, he's still on the ship. Not the yes, ship please. specifically, you want to hit the captain. I'd love to hit the captain, yep. The, the guy that you have been specifically offered bonus money to if he survives. Okay, you can hit him. A, um, a ballista does a 1d20 plus 7. And it has... I mean, to be fair, it's, it, you know, it's a ballista, so I think it can be non-lethal, right? <laughs> it, I mean... it cannot non-lethal. It's a ballista. Ruh -ruh. Uh And it, it does 1d10 plus 3. Okay. Hmm. Well, if he's coming over, that changes things. And my allies are being swarmed here, so... Okay, plans change. 5, 10, 15. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20. I'm gonna just teleport into the middle here i'm just gonna make a note of like where the ballista is actually currently pointing yeah that's fair uh then i'm gonna i'm gonna start smacking falls reckless again of course uh we'll go for the blurt sh the blurt shirt yes the blurt shirt yes hurt the blurt hmm. shirt oh fuck hmm um, so how do you want to do that? <laughs> well, uh, no, I, Just I, I, straight I, I, up, I assume you're gonna do lethal damage. Um. Oh, that's a lot. That is every that is one possible. Roll. Oh, does the first one take him them out? <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, he has a significant amount of health. Well, he, there's. He just survives your attacks. He oh has, my! So they're thugs. They're a they're a, a half challenge. They have thirty two hit points. 
So this guy took 18 plus 6, 24, 26 damage. So he has 6 health left. I, I'm still happy with that. <laughs> I mean, how can you not be? Uh, it's pretty good damage, bro. I spend the rest of the movement spinning on the spot. Understandable. Uh, this guy wants to be in on the whole action. And he doesn't see the weird goblin imp thing. He only sees the holy light. See, he's got a mace and he's going to boop you, Samantha. Oh, no. Uh, both of those will hit. Ooh. That's not what I expected you to say with those low rolls, but okay. Uh, he has advantage because I reckless. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, that's, so that's nine halved. That's four then. Four because of rage. Ow. Avery is proving to be more of an ally than you thought. Uh, he's going to move up and he's going to attempt to boop this white shirt dude. Fucking hell, Avery! I approve. Can we just, like, take a second to just appreciate this dude and his fucking crit ratio? <laughs> the crits are what caused the end of the world. <laughs> Nothing else. Uh, so anyway, that guy dies. Um, and Bromley, also known as the Chill, will yeah. and he's just gonna pose menacingly. How menacingly? Eleven. Not as menacingly as you were menacingly to him. <laughs> Lyra. Um, and this is one of the moments where I wish I had the invocation that allows me to push people off with the Eldritch, Eldritch Blast, but oh that well. would be so cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> that would be incredibly funny. Yeah. You would not be getting your extra gold. Um, well, uh, let's go for, like, this one. Mm -hmm. Let's go for a bit of a pew pew. Two hits. That's gonna be 16 damage. Well, thankfully 16 is easily, uh, divisible from 32. Mm-hmm. Thanks, computer programming courses. <laughs> Anything else? And the bonus action. Friend says hi. Um, it's just out of range, unfortunately. Wiggly worm. Yeah. Uh, Turn. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Okay. Don't have to run things back a bit. Um, bonus action. I'm going to command Zinder to attack. <laughs> I can do that. Okie dokie. Um, same guy I went for. Alright. Specifics. Yep. So this is going to be attempted to be non-lethal. Mm-hmm. 18 to hit. That hits. Okay, you need a con save. Also, it actually would be an advantage as well. That's yeah. what he get some um, so yeah, gonna take four piercing and nine poison. Or thirteen total damage. So they still have three HP left. But they aren't okay. happy about it. That's it. Right. Luca. Ah, uh, which of these two like between the one in front of me and one to my left are looking worse off. Uh, the one to your left looks worse off. Alright, I'm gonna square up with with them. Crack my knuckles, crack my neck. <laughs> uh, then hit him with a one-two. 
So you hit him with a longsword. I assume that hits. That is enough to do him in. Oh, dead? He I only has six him. HP left. Okay, it's 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 non lethal. <laughs> okay, so you hit him with the pommel? I think I do hit him with the sword, but it's like I'm avoiding the major arteries. I'm like okay. not stabbing in the stomach. I'm like slashing, you know, like an arm and he just like faints because he's lost so much blood. <laughs> Alright. I mean, um, and then yeah. uh, I have two attacks, so if you want to narrate that, and then I'll continue. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, the guy in blue goes down with a cut to his, not his femoral archery, because that would be quite deadly, uh, but to his leg, he grasps it, goes down screaming, and passes out from the pain. I swivel to the other guy. <laughs> Such a grin on my face. I'm gonna unarm strike this person. Natural 20! What? So that I can get the plus two AC from Agile Perry, but haha. -ha. Uh, well, I mean, that hits uh, for 11. Yep. This guy um, and hasn't then... been hit yet, by the way. He hasn't been hit yet. Okay, and then I will, in that case, I will. Oh, there's a lot of people around me. It's not that bad. A lot of you know them what? are dead or half dead. I was say, a lot of them are dead. I was considering using patient defense, but I, I have the plus two to my AC, so I'm at 18, so I'm actually going to spend a key point to uh, flurry of blows and just keep smacking on this guy. Oh, no, wait. I realized that the Red Cross meant dead, dead. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to sort out the important from the non important. A 12 does not hit. Ah, so both of those don't hit, but that's fine. It's kind of like I like hit like the armor and then hit the armor again, and I'm like, oh, that's not gonna work. <laughs> you're like, you're honestly like your confidence has been so amped up from that first hit that you just end up going like, what, what, huh? Can I try to scare this guy? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Roll an intimidation check. You certainly attempt to do so. Just trying to psych him out. Uh, and then I'm going to use my movement to just kind of uh, circle around him a little bit. Uh, he responds. He looks to his left. He looks to his right. He looks all around and takes in his plight. Uh, he's going to uh, disengage. And run for it. Anyone have Sentinel? <laughs> no. Rats. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll, I'll carry it for him. Zinda? Um, action invisible. <laughs> mm -hmm. And... So, concentrate on that. And... So, you know, <laughs> so she is tiny, so okay. like, he can just walk past her, but... <laughs> Alright. But she's yeah. there. She's yeah. waiting. Mm -hmm. Cool. Samantha. Okay, I'm gonna use my bonus action to teleport. Hello! Understandable. Uh, Have a good afterlife. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna make this reckless, because... Yeah. Oh wow, that misses. That just doesn't hit, but um. That, that, yeah. <laughs> that that hits. Samantha's terrifying. That's fifteen. Uh, fifteen seriously wounds him, and he needs to make a dexterity saving throw. She fails. Say goodbye to this guy, everyone. <laughs> Uh, he gets hit in the uh, the hip, and he falls from the chain, and falls several thousand feet. Can I just grab hold of his hand, so it looks like he's got Ooh. a glimmer of hope, and then drop him? Oh! <laughs> um, please make me a <laughs> dexterity thing. Ice cold. Okay, this is fine. <laughs> 
Uh, that normal. Oh wait, no. Do I have? Is Dane? What? The advantage on dexterity saving throw against Fex, you can see, is falling to my death an effect I can see. It, you're not falling to your death, you're uh, rolling to try catch him before he falls to his death. Oh, okay, that's fine then. Uh, it's not an effect so much as it is movement. It would be classified as. Oh, that's fine. I um, try anyway. So you reach out for him, but he just falls, and I assume you turn that into a wave. <laughs> or maybe a bird. Nah, I just stare. You're more dignified than that. Uh, either way, he dies. Uh, is that your turn? I think I have ten feet of movement left. I teleported, then moved a little bit, so I've got a little bit a left. Approach the boss casually. Yeah. Alright, well, the last grunt is uh, going to use all of his movement. He's going to casually approach... Uh, ah... And will fail to hit. Uh, Avery is no doubt going to get yet another crit. Oh, disappointing Avery, but you still killed him, so good job you. <clears throat> well. Bromley sensing uh, something amiss to his behind will turn to you and try and spear Samantha in the belly. That fair. Uh, mi no, hit, miss, miss. So just the first one. Ooh! I know, right? Damn! Shame that's only nine. Uh, right, reckless. Uh, yeah, reckless and raging, and I have a lot of hit points. <laughs> that was a lot of damage, but... Um... It, it still is a lot of damage. I'll yeah. give him credit. Done the most damage to me so far. Lyra. Uh, bonus action. Friend coming to say hi. Um, action. Um, well, this one's the only one alive, so... Uh, okay. <laughs> Nine damage. Assuming that hits. The 18 hits, yes. Yeah. So nine damage. Okay, nine damage. Against the only guy still standing. Anything else? Uh, move to the edge here and that's it. Luca. So, question um, about grappling. If I grapple somebody, does that take my action? Yeah, it's an action to grapple. Unless okay, you have, like, a specific mod yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah. No, I just I haven't played somebody who's strong enough to grapple in such a long time. I just wasn't 100% <laughs> aware enough. of the rules. <laughs> Fair enough. I have never played a monk or any class like that, so, like, I don't know what crazy shit they can do. Except what monks baby showed are, me. Yeah, monks are stupid. At the yeah, I mean, here's the thing, they're not OP though because they don't have magic, or most of them don't, or it's extremely yeah, limited. It's when you get to the levels where they get proficiency in everything. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you saw lightning bolt go off at the beginning of, anyways. Um, anyways. But, so how messed up is this captain looking? Um, on the scale of, like, healthy to death, he's looking to be about 80% healthy. Okay, um, I'm gonna make Sorry. eye contact. You know, feel free. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I'm gonna make eye contact and cast Hex. Use my once per day Hex on this dude. Ooh, against what ability? I will give disadvantage on strength checks. <laughs> and I'm just gonna calmly walk up and start wailing on him with my attacks. <laughs> That's not going to hit. That's going to hit. <laughs> and I do an extra d6 from Hex. 
And that's my turn. The D6 is necrotic. I don't know if it matters. Yeah, I'm going to just casually approach it. Precisely, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so you do in total 18 damage. Correct. Am I reading that right? Okay. Just having to do maths. Zinda. Okay. Um, so again just as far away as from where she needs to be as she is um as she could be so action um is actually going to do a cool thing and become a raven so now she has a 60 foot fly speed cool blimey and is going to use just over half of that to get here Anything else? Nope. In that case, Samantha. I think you know. Are you gonna boof? I am gonna boof. Uh, both of those hit. Wonderful! <laughs> That's 22 slashing. That is indeed 22 slashing. And then I'll use my bonus action to teleport, but I don't move anywhere, so I just disappear and reappear for the fun of it. This appears to startle Bromley. To be fair, it does look like I'm incinerated and then just reappear. So yeah, it'd probably scare most people. Bromley is also going to casually approach the pirate, drag the dying corpse of his friend out of the way, and then attempt to... Fucking hell, Avery! <laughs> and uh, Avery also does some damage. Literally gives Avery like an impressed look, like damn. Avery has done more nat 20s in one round of combat than I think I have ever seen from any character. <laughs> and I am really regretting not putting more like like lower level pirates on here because if I'd have known that Avery would bring this shit to the game. Yeah, I'm just I'm so impressed with that. We have to adopt her, you guys. <laughs> this is what this is what happens when you fuck with a captain's ship, okay? <laughs> True. Avery is pissed. The Esmeralda, like Esmeralda must mean something to him. Oh yeah. Uh either way, he does what he wants to do. Um and Bromley is going to attack every person he can see with one spear attack, so it's gonna be Samantha. Uh, hit. And then Luca. Hit. hit. And then Avery. Hit. 18 against Samantha. 15 against Luca. 17 against Avery. Luca's starting to look fucked up. Ooh, single digits. Okay. Your single digits? Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Really Theoretical. My goddaughter is called Myra. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so, hypothetical. Mm -hmm. Um, if by some weird means Samantha was suddenly able to get bigger, would that cause any problems? It would make it a lot more difficult for her to stay airborne, yes. Okay. Um... I mean, not impossible, especially considering that Samantha <laughs> is, to your knowledge, quite adept when it comes to being on ships and balancing and stuff. Um... You've also mm. seen them teleporting. Yes. So, yeah. probably helps. So, I think in Lyra's view, it's probably a 60-40 chance of survival like 60% chance of survival 40% chance of bye yeah um to be fair I don't think she would think in chances you just think of is a big good and the answer is probably yes so 
Hey, Samantha, do you want to be big? <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm already awesome, so yes. Cool. Yes. <laughs> um. So and large. So you're now a large creature. Um. Can you and... do token shenanigans, Ren? And you double in size um, in every dimension. Uh, uh, you have advantage on strength checks and saves, and you deal extra 1d4 damage with weapons. I mean, I have the advantage <laughs> anyway, so... I am going to need you to roll a dexterity saving throw uh, <laughs> with advantage <laughs> due to uh, your danger history. Sense. I mean, I've also got danger sensor to give advantage, but yeah, cool. I will. A Twelve is, it... is like just enough. The DC was ten. Uh, okay, no, that's fine. Like to stay uh, balancing on the the chains. Um, uh. Like as part of your presence on there, the chains actually do like bring the ship about ten feet closer. <laughs> so you're literally just like. Your your de like your weight is now depressing the chains down a little bit. Right, I am proficient in all weapons. Does the airship count as a weapon? <laughs> well, I'm also proficient in airships. <laughs> oh god, <laughs> improvised weapons don't technically count as like regular weapons, to my knowledge. But... Yeah, no, that's fine. And um, this is would technically be an improvised weapon. Even if you're proficient in driving it. If True. Superman were proficient in driving a car, it would still count as an improvised weapon if he picked up a car. God, insurance must be ridiculous in uh, cities with superheroes. I Imagine know. trying to have to prove that like, <laughs> to your insurance company. What's that? Hulk through your car? Yeah, yeah. Add it to the queue, mate. There's a, a, a really funny like cheap book series that I got free through, um, uh, through Audible. Uh, called Layer for Rent, which deals with like, what if literally superheroes and supervillains were just normalized in the world and just part of life, and insurance had to take them into account, etc., etc. Oh boy. Um. It's not like the best written book series in the world, but it's entertaining. Hmm. Okay. Um, Sorry, just popped into my head. No worries. So, bonus action. Mm -hmm. um, going to go for a big peck um, on this guy. That Zinder is. Peck. So, 19 to hit. Hits. And con save. Succeeds, so that's going to be 5 piercing, 6 poison. This poor captain, like... He can't... He either dies or dies. <laughs> uh, Actually, no, he'll live. Um, and... I'm uh, gonna jump off the crates, because it seems fun. So, Fair yeah. enough. That's it. Luca, you're feeling healthy. I'm feeling so healthy. Um, <laughs> and you can see gonna... that the, the remaining captain also looks quite healthy now. Yeah, I feel that. If you um, can even pay attention to him behind the absolute magnitude that is Samantha. I feel like maybe I've seen this before. <laughs> but I'm like, oh, big Samantha, okay. <laughs> I assume that hits. Yep, and I do an extra D6 necrotic because they're hexed. Um, then I get hit with an unarmed... That hits two, d6 necrotic. Nine damage total. So that's 11 plus nine. Yep. So 20. Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously agile parry, so my AC goes up by two. And then I'm going to use my last key point, two step of the wind. Because I'm feeling just a little bit ouch. So I'm going to use my bonus action to disengage. And then I can easily get up to this ballista with my movement. Nice. The ballista, which is currently pointing more or less in the exact direction. Yep. Uh, and that's my turn. That's all that she's wanted to do since the minute she's laid eyes upon the ballista. 
Zinda. Uh, action, invisible. Um, and we move this way. Let's go to like here. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's that. I appreciate that. Uh, I will teleport just here, so mm-hmm. I am no longer doing what I was doing. And then we're we're gonna repeat history, or possibly enact it. Uh, the twenty-five hits. Lovely. I'll roll the additional d4. That's two on top of nine, so that's eleven. Okay. And are you doing this one lethally? This is an important question. I was asked to. So yeah. I'll oh. basically bring him in for a hug and then just smack him on the temple with that pommel of this massive, really old-looking greatsword. Fair. Uh, so the guy had 10 HP left and you dealt 11 damage to him, so... Hmm. That means combat is over. Sorry to those who wanted to fire Beliste. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, you could kind of fire it at Samantha. She's got the hit points for it. <laughs> No, if I'm not going to do that. At least with one bullet. Uh, I was, I'm out of key points, so honestly, I could use a short rest anyway. So this is perfectly fine. <laughs> so. Both bosses have been captured non-lethally. I assume you'll just, you will eventually end up tying them both to this um, wheel. Yeah, that's like the first thing I do. Lyra, Ly- Lyra, can you drop this, please? Oh, uh, right. Yes, great. And concentration dropped. Whee! Mario's artifacts. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, so, like, fire's spreading quite a lot over on the, uh, one of the ships. Oh, can we? Should we just like unchain that? Yeah. Just... G- give me a minute. Because I can't like I can't do anything about that. I mean, you guys Can could I... like let someone stay unconscious there. So that's quite yeah. grim. But also, you're not gonna get a monetary like uh problem from doing that. Yeah, I just gotta so cut I the chain. You you do you. It's just it's just priorities, you know. Yeah. Nope. You're talking to somebody who's raised by the Fae, so it's just, it's not. <laughs> Eventually. The morals are maybe not all there. Uh, the ship and everything on it is left by the wayside. Uh, but this one is kind of just dragged along with you. Uh, this corpse is thrown off board by Avery. Good riddance for almost getting us killed, traitor. Oh, you did wonderfully. Good job. As um, did all you... of you. You far exceeded our expectations. If you want to pilot this one, I'll go you know, control the other one so it isn't dragging behind. That would be useful. He's going to go pilot. Uh, I assume Luca and Lyra, you're going to, like, watch over the prisoners? Yeah, like, I'll just kind of, like, I'm literally just going to sit on the deck and, like, try to take a short rest, but just, like, watching them in case these guys, like, wake up and put up a fuss. Uh, yeah, Lyra's going to get distracted, Zinda's going to watch. <laughs> <laughs> that is why we have familiars. Exactly. And eventually, um... The day nears its end, and you all reach your destination. I feel like I've seen this somewhere. 
I would be a short rest from this. You would be able to get a short rest, yes. Okay. I get my spell slots back. And someone is waiting for you at the dock as you land. Oh boy. <laughs> Ah, oh, wonderful, yes. I see that you have not run into any significant trouble. You are here with my order, correct? <laughs> mm -hmm. Ah, I see you have some more test subjects. Would these be the dastardly villains that we were warned about? Don't worry. We have a code of ethics here that we must adhere to. I will make personally sure that they are not harmed. Yeah, why do you want this second one parked? Tie it up. Over with the others. Okie dokie. Samantha, I assume, unchains it and then goes, yeehaw. I imagine it would have been unchained from the point of uh, taking control of it. That also sounds like a Samantha move. If you're interested, I did come up with a name for that ship. Oh, hell yeah. The Howling Hind. I mean, they were certainly howling. And they also and came Will from your behind. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> hell yeah. Uh. Uh, okay, so that one will be taken over to where the others are. Uh, Matria, insert name here, 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 and here, <laughs> uh, will instruct several of her peons to unload the many casks that have survived. I have been told to pay you all extra. If you brought back a ship, and if you've brought back one of these, people are alive, so here is your payment. Thank you all very much. And she hands each of the three of you 500 gold pieces. Yeah, yeah I'm even more rich. <laughs> and I yeah, just, counting, just counting them. <laughs> I always have another job for those who are able to prove themselves, if you are interested. Mm -hmm. And with that, we'll fade to black in case we have to skip a game next time, but I really want to play D&D, &D, and then I'll come up with whatever Matria wanted you to do. Oh boy. Oh, that was amazing. Yeah, that was Perfect fun. timing too. Yeah, that's not fun. Yeah, I th the timing worked out better than I thought. Um, thank you guys very much. Yeah, I just knew I wanted to play some D and D this weekend, you know. Yeah, that's fair. I'm terrified to think where in the history books these characters' names are going to appear. <laughs> I mean, if they're anything to do with Matra, it's not on the good side. <laughs> if they survive long enough to make it into the history books, is hard. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, if, if it entirely depends. Yeah, whether we get actively killed or whether it's a passage of time killed, because I can't. <laughs> the, the second one cannot happen to Samantha, literally. Yeah. So it has to be the first one. Oh, so interesting. So Samantha could, could still be around. Uh, so Samantha Ooh. could, in theory, like I will tell you, yeah, her total age is two billion one hundred and two. We need to talk about that then. I think Josh. Yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy <laughs> to. But, I honestly um, think that. So. That Luca is going to at some point get stuck in the Feywild before everything happens, and then if, mm. if our group eventually gets to the Feywild, they might meet her because the Feywild is weird and has weird rules. And maybe if she gets stuck in the Feywild, Lyra might have as well. No, not really. Um... <laughs> You're not going to come with me. I mean, maybe actually. It's like, despite being a fairy, she'd never actually been to the Feywild since her family was from Material. 
Yeah, so... uh, Luca's adoptive parents are from the Feywild, <laughs> so... Maybe Lyra will idea. get, like, tempted to see what, what the fuss is about after travelling with Luca for so long and hearing all these cool things about the Feywild. Probably, yeah. And that Lyra might, the might mean Pixie that Lyra. all three of these guys could possibly be alive in uh, the main plotline. Or at least descendants of them. <laughs> yes. Um... I mean, it's a better alternative than to being, like, three red splat stains after being hit by Matrio's gravity magic. So. <laughs> yeah, I, anything's a better alternative to that. But, um, yeah. Thanks for all this. It worked out a lot better than I could have hoped. Yeah. Pirates! Yeah.